Before we jump into the video, I need to give a huge shout out to the first two Patreons uh, of the channel. And that is to Teos and to Brian. Your support is greatly appreciated. It's going to help the channel grow and open the door for future projects such as live streaming and other exciting things to come to the channel. So link in the description below if you want to check out uh, all the tiers and see the awesome rewards we have. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to a long overdue video in the 9th edition Tyranid Tactica series. It's time to look at one of the coolest and most versatile units in the Codex, the Hive Tyrant. The Hive Tyrant has been a staple in a lot of my tiered lists since way back in 6th edition when I first got into 40k. In those days though, it was pretty much a single loadout which was twin link devourers with wings and its role was pretty clearly divine as just a solid gumbo that flew around shooting everything and you brought as many of the tyrants as you could. Uh, there was a case for an extremely long time, but it brings me great joy that in 9th edition, the Hive Tyrant has many more options available to at least allow it to perform well and fulfill a little bit more of a versatile role on the table, which is really cool to see. In this tactic of video, we're gonna be dis discussing the following items in relation to the Hive Tyrant. So the general advantages of the Tyrant, the disadvantages, in the overall uh, role and how it fits into a lot of lists, the high fleet advantages and disadvantages. Then we'll go over some of the loadouts and the weapon options and look at a sample list and talk about how the Tyrant will be used and actually show a sample deployment and some suggestions on how you can effectively move the Tyrant to maximize uh, the usage out of him. And then we're going to look at some modeling tips as well. Um, that is a big factor with a lot of people is how do I model the Tyrant with so many loadouts? Magnets are your friend and I'll give you a better look at that. Plus talk about how to use the wings and also create some custom uh, weapons to get those extra loadouts that don't come with the box. Now we're gonna talk about the advantages of the Hive Tyrant. So one of the nice things with him, especially equipped with wings, is that the Hive Tyrant is very fast and very mobile on the table. Even without wings, he does move nine inches, which is very solid um, to zip around the table plus with the advance. Um, the Tyrant is also pretty decent where it can take two Psychic Powers and also the res Resonance Barb Relic, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. And uh, it kind of makes the Flying Hydrate, especially with Wings, kind of a Psychic Gunboat. I often use them with this uh, kit to fly forward and do a bunch of Smiting and Psychic Screaming. So a great way to fly forward, chip apart whatever target you're going to go at, or even weaken a really heavy target that the Tyrant needs to charge into a takeout. Uh, I find the Tyrant does really excel at uh, taking out exposed characters or like crucial um, targets such as um, a l mid to light uh, vehicle, potentially heavier ones depending again on uh, how much damage you can output um, with Psychic and whatnot. The other nice thing with the Hive Tyrant being so mobile is that it's obviously a Synapse creature so it gives you a bit more freedom in terms of uh, Synapse coverage on the table. Uh, it is a moderate melee um, unit and has some good potential there however that kind of ties into the disadvantages which we'll go over in a second so there is high uh, damage potential which is great um some decent shooting output as well again uh well, i'm saying this here and i'm talking about how awesome the tyrant is that's the thing it is very um it is very good but it fulfills um a very unique role which we'll get into a little bit more detail shortly so uh, the Tyrant is good at clearing away chaff units, such as uh, with the Twin Link Devourer, so it can pump up a ton of shots while also using another loadout to still be useful into melee as well. The other weapons are, um, they can do some high damage, but we'll get into the disadvantages about why I'm not really talking about that yet. One other nice thing is that the Hive Tyrant with wings was buffed by the FAQ update that was back in January, I believe, dropping the points down a little bit, which made it nicer um, when choosing a, a flyer into the list that you're going to run. Now we gotta discuss the disadvantages of this unit. So if you're considering a Hive Tyrant or thinking about um, adding one into your force, uh, keep in mind these disadvantages when selecting a Hive Tyrant. So the big thing uh, with the melee attacks that I mentioned before where the damage potential is there, the issue with that is it only does have four attacks. There's ways to add another attack, which is nice, but often it kind of shoehorns the Tyrant into a very specific role, which in my opinion uh, isn't always the best case, but it, it definitely can work out if you're planning around that. Um, it does require the adaption as well, if we're talking about melee, um, the hive adaption, which is murderous size, adaptive physiology, I'm saying here. <laughs> uh, so it's murderous size, and that what that does is it gives an extra uh, strength, uh, damage, and extra AP to a melee weapon. So um, equipped with things like monstrous running claws, it gives that a little bit more um, consistency and also ups the potential again of the weapon. Being the tyrant is only um, 
strength uh, six, which kind of sucks, but <laughs> it is what it is. But this is a way to kind of mitigate that. However, again, it, it does eat into the adaptive physiologies, which are um, quite often uh, needed for other units depending on the uh, build. But we'll talk about those uh, in a little bit more detail later on. Uh, I do find the Tyrant does have a little bit of survivability issues. He's not hard to kill, that's the thing. So movement and really thinking about the player going to use the Tyrant for is crucial in ensuring he survives. Uh, launching it forward uh, isn't always the best idea. It can certainly work out, but again, he is only um, tough seven with a four up in ball and a three up save normally. So not impossible to take out um, with some decent shooting, but just something to kind of keep in mind that he isn't the uh, toughest guy out there. Uh, the next thing to mention too is he does have a larger physical profile uh, being looking at the wings option too because that's the thing if you can see the wings you can target them the tyrant does benefit from obscuring terrain which i have set up actually right here to show you so if you were to deploy like this anything from here over you'd be able to see with the wings sticking out we'll just ignore that barrel right there however you can ignore that a little bit by turning them sideways the only disadvantage to that is you can't have the wings hanging off the board edge which is the other thing to consider too. So depending where the obscuring terrain is, sometimes it's tough to have the Tyrant um, deployed exactly the way they want. I know you can start them off the board. Personally, I find it much more useful having the Tyrant on uh, turn one, but depending on the scenario you'll find yourself in, you may have to do that, which is perfectly okay. Um, now talking about the uh, number of shots as well um, with the heavier weapons. I don't have the model here. These are the twin linked devourers, um, but we'll still talk about them, anyway, which is the Stranglethorn Cannon and the Heavy Venom Cannon. So actually pretty decent weapons overall. Um, a few buffs we needed for the Stranglethorn Cannon, in my opinion, but uh, they are randomized shots with the Heavy Venom Cannon being D3 and the other one being D6 shots. There's a way to kind of um, ignore, or not ignore this, but ensure that you get maximum shots, but again, that eats into a relic. So that's the only thing, a little bit of inconsistency there, um, especially where you get uh, D3 shots with the Heavy Venom Cannon and then say you roll a one for your shooting. Every miss really hurts the Tyrant um, when it comes to that. So personally, not my favorite option. I know others have found success. If it works on your meta, all the power to you. So now let's get into the overall role of the Hive Tyrant and how does it come into play in a lot of lists? In my experience so far in all the games that I've played, um, I've not really built my list around the Tyrant, unless I'm doing the Murder Tyrant approach, which is um, a bit more of a very specific build for the Hive Tyrant. I usually build the core of my list or kind of come up with an overall game plan. And then uh, depending on the HQs that I have selected, uh, if I have the points to take a Tyrant, I always go for it. If not, then I uh, um, have other options to choose. I personally have found the Tyrant um, on a whole kind of fulfills a nice supporting role, a supportive harassment role is um, the best way that um, I found to use a Tyrant. And now we're talking about um, a winged Hive Tyrant at that. Uh, the walking one can work, but again, I, I just find the mobility is key, especially in ninth edition. Getting around the table fast is crucial, especially with Tyranids um, combining some high fleet adaptions and also some stratagems to really make um, units zip around the table quite quick and also use um, some stratagems to hide after some successful melee. Um, so in this supporting role, uh, the best approach in my opinion is working with a hybrid loadout. So we'll just grab this guy here, slide him forward. I know he doesn't have wings, but we just got him set up to show you. So this is one of the um, common loadouts that I run, um, being that I have uh, one set of twin link devourers and then monsters running claws. Um, this gives him some decent melee potential. Again, only having those four attacks kind of hurts, so taking the murder size adaptive physiology more than makes up for it. And then you have 12 shots. It can help clear away um, some hordes or chip away at units that you might need to kill. Uh, combining that with pathogenic slime, if you can swing it, uh, if there's no units like the um, Hero Duel or Exocrine um, vying for that stratagem, you can use um, that to kind of chip away a little bit extra at, uh, say, Marines, for example. So every failed save, uh, hurts even more. Being at the strength six as well, um, shooting lighter targets can really chew through them uh, and get the wounds through, which is um, really nice. Uh, again, in this supportive role with wings, the one thing that you can really do to move, maximize movement and damage on the table is if you can hunt down a key target, such as a character, like a vehicle or something like that, a lighter vehicle that you know you should likely kill in combat, you can use the overrun stratagem to launch the tyrant um, away with the wings and advance to get him hidden and hopefully spring out and do the same thing again. So it's kind of nice keeping that in mind and trying to plan for that, which we'll talk about a little bit later when we show the positioning and just how you can move um, the Tyrant around a little bit more. 
So um, now using the uh, like a dedicated roll um, tends to see a little bit less um, optimization in terms of his uh, um, success on the table. Um, when I say dedicated roll, that would mean like a full shooting roll or just full melee. I find if you can combine the both, you'll get uh, a little bit more out of it, especially if you can stick the devours on. I know points wise, it's not always gonna fit, but um, the hybrid approach in my opinion is the way to go. Um, as it gives like good melee threat if things do get close say you have a walking tyrant and then like if you have some shooting as well to kind of go forward but again you gotta determine what is going to work best for yourself but just giving my opinions on this um it gives you a good idea of kind of how you can use the tyrants to um fulfill whatever you need him to do now one of the other roles too is like uh, i mentioned earlier the murder tyrant or just a, uh, a flying tyrant to launch in is kind of a missile so we're going to talk about the murder tyrant in a bit more detail later on but essentially what that is is a super melee um, focused tyrant that can do a ton of wounds if it gets through uh, and does the damage uh, it's kind of a, a like a, just a full-on missile because if you can't overrun depending on what you're hunting down um, based off other units being closer the tyrant is more than likely going to die so that's what i mean when i kind of call it a missile so there is a very um high risk uh, high reward with that style of play and you have to be a little bit more skilled in how you move and position everything so it's a little harder to use but it is a ton of fun when it works when it does not <laughs> it sucks losing them because it is a much heavier point sink too um, sticking the extra uh, points to kit out um, the tyrant as well now quickly talking about a uh, high fleet uh, on a whole before we get into the advantages and disadvantages of the high fleets i found um leviathan kraken um and behemoth have worked the best with the tyrant chronos is okay um, on a whole i mean generally speaking the tyrant isn't going to sit still which we'll talk about again in more detail but i found those three in my experience in terms of actually benefiting the tyrant um have seen the most advantages leviathan in my opinion it's it's my personal favorite fleet i know uh, that's just an opinion there but i really like adding that extra bit of survivability to my tyrant because every wound it ignores is a big deal let's talk high fleet advantages and disadvantages so starting out with my favorite, <laughs> Leviathan. Uh, and personally, I do think this is, um, and this is specifically talking about the Tyrant itself, I do think this is one of the ones that benefits the unit um, quite well, being that it's a Synapse creature. Uh, adds a lot to the survivability. Like I said, the Tyrant isn't invincible, but uh, every little bit that it can survive um, does help. And plus, where it heads up forward Synapse, if you do have, say, a creature like, uh, let's just say a Dimacaron, um, in a Leviathan detachment, then having that come forward if it hasn't gobbled anything near the Hive Tyrant is going to help out a little bit too. So just something to think about um, with Leviathan. So it is pretty decent on that front, um, if you ask me. Now, talking about Behemoth, this is the High Fleet where you're going to use the Murder Tyrant, being that you can take the Sisa Turan a Relic, which um, I'll talk a little bit more about the Relic specifically later on. But um, this Relic... Uh, gives the tyrant well actually i'll just talk about it now <laughs> plus one uh strength um sixes uh score an additional hit roll and um combining that with murder size here i think you're looking at ap minus four and then you can even throw toxin sacks in there too so sixes are going to be a flat five damage so tons of damage potential with that uh, as well as kind of helping with um the attacks as well oh it, it all adds on one one extra strength i think i mentioned that so with murder size you're looking at a strength eight tyrant so again really chopping through the things. However, the one thing I do find um, with this loadout, um, it is a little bit CP heavy, being that um, the psychic power for Behemoth, if you're obviously running this, you want to get it off on the Tyrant because it adds one to your wound roll. I believe it's warp charge seven, yes it is. And um, so that it's a little bit harder to get off for a psychic power and being that you can't take resonance barb, um, unless you're using another psychic to give it to the murder Tyrant. I potentially need to use the CP for a reroll if you fail the psychic test. Um, as well as then you're gonna have to overrun and then let's say the murder tyrant gets in there and doesn't kill its target because usually you're gonna send it after something super heavy duty you'll need it to fight again and then again and then using overrun as well to zip it around so in my experience the behemoth can be very cp heavy uh, unless things are just work out very well for yourself so that's something to keep in mind if you choose to run the murder tyrant behemoth route now for uh your mangander the this high fleet it, it only works for the walking um Tyrant being that uh, units will fly, don't get the high fleet adaption. Uh, so it makes for a strong mid to backfield positioning for the Tyrant and being that we get a two up save, um, which, it, which is really nice. 
but again i think the um hive tyrant with wings excels a bit better however if you don't have the points for it and you're using the walking tyrant in more of a like kind of a psychic um, roll additioning with those mortals with a ton of shots maybe with the devourers it can it can certainly come in handy personally uh I, i'm not a fan of this fleet just doesn't fit my play style but i'm definitely going to play around with it more but those are the kind of the advantages and disadvantages in my opinion lose the mobility for um a little bit more survivability but it's hard to say if that really pays off compared to the other ones now kraken um this is obviously the fastest high fleet as many of you already know all you tier fans out there if you're not um, beware Kraken, so fast. <laughs> so uh, it ensures the speed of the Winged Tyrant, um, being that you get to roll 3d6 um, for the advanced roll. Uh, the only downside to this one, in my opinion, is that you need Onslaught to go off to be able to charge um, using uh, the advanced roll and ensuring you have the speed. And you also can't take advantage of the stratagem, which lets you double the advanced roll, being that units will fly, can't do that. So that's just another thing to kind of keep in mind. Um, so yeah, so on a whole, it can keep them keep them very fast. Again, using that uh, 3d6 advance roll, especially combined with the overrun um, stratagem to run away after killing something, makes the uh, the tyrant very fast. So Kraken, in my opinion, is debatably the best one for the tyrant because again, you want mobility and speed to get this guy alive and kind of fulfill that supporting harassment role. But I, I've I've had a lot of success with um, Lyrans in the Kraken fleet. Kronos again. Uh, the Tyrant, more or less, with its its movement capability, is going to be going around the table. I suppose if you want to take a walking Tyrant um, with a heavier weapon, uh, with the Relic that maximizes the shots, it could work out. But personally, I feel for the points you're spending there, you're really not going to see a ton of value out of it. Um, but like I said, uh, in, in doing these videos too, like these tactical videos, it's to give you an overview of uh, my thoughts and, and experiences with everything. I, I know everyone's meta is completely different depending on the area you play. Um, we play a mix of competitive and not so um, competitive games here at times. We try and uh, take units that we don't always use. Um, we both, uh, like opponent and I, agree on that usually. So that's one other thing to mention too. This is, I'm not saying this is the be all end all because again, you're gonna find certain things that work for you, but I just wanna highlight that generally what I see is the advantage and disadvantage. So just kind of a little thing to mention there. At least I try to mention it in all of our uh, tactic videos for the periods. Uh, then we're gonna talk about Gorgon. Um, <laughs> It's good for a melee build, but I feel like the list needs to be, I mentioned this in the um, Tyranny Warrior video as well. The list needs to be very finely tuned to do what it's going to do. And honestly, the adaption really doesn't, compared to the other ones, it's just, eh, it's just, eh, that's, <laughs> that's kind of my opinion on it. Um, and then talking about Hydra, there's literally not a single thing about Hydra that even buffs a Tyrant and <laughs> just, oh, that poor High Fleet is just useless. So I'm not even really going to get into them. I'm sorry if someone was hoping for a bit more detail, but really at this point in 9th edition and the uh, Codex as it stands right now, the uh, uh, High Fleet Hydra, there's not a lot, whole lot to say about it outside of, um, um, or sorry, uh, outside of open play where you can take advantage of some of the rules. Yeah. Anyway, though, that's pretty much the gist of the High Fleet advantages, disadvantages. To give you an idea of kind of how you can fit the Tyrant into a few roles, uh, depending on what fleet you wish to run or um, prefer to run. We're going to talk about um, all the different loadouts and the different options and uh, some thoughts about why they may be good and why they may not be the best option. So uh, right off the bat we'll talk about the wings. Um, they're the best value I think on the tire regardless of what build you're going to go for. I mean, obviously if you're taking a uh, gunboat type thing that's going to sit back <laughs> you may not take the wings but on the whole just having the mobility like it's it's so huge especially in ninth edition like I keep saying uh, being able to jump all around is, is so crucial. Uh, to taking board control, ensuring you're scoring secondaries and that such. So in my opinion, the wings are a no-brainer. Um, if you're going to take a Tyrant, take the wings. It, it's it's going to pay off, in my opinion. Uh, one other thing I really want to mention, I know we're going to talk about modeling a little later on, is there is often a misconception here, and I was certainly a um, 
an individual who thought this too when I first started tuning. This is, is a little confusing. So as it stands right now, the Hive Tyrant kit, um, you get the wings and they take up an arm slot. So a lot of people think um, that, oh shoot, like, oops, magnets, uh, that a weapon slot is gone. Uh, in fact, they actually do not take up um, a weapon slot. So it's simply just the way it's modeled. A lot of people pin it onto the back. Um, <clears throat> I personally like this look myself, so that's why I went with this for the wings. Um, there's a ton of ways that you can kind of still magnetize. Like I'll show you this guy a little bit after, but I do want to mention right off, since we're talking about loadouts, the wings do not take up a weapon slot, nor do the feet here count as a particular weapon type. It is simply just aesthetics in that regard. You could say that maybe that looks like a second set of sliding towns, and to you, maybe that represents it. It's your fleet, it's your army, you can do what you want, but rules-wise, it has no impact. So very important to mention that. Now let's talk about the melee weapons first. Um, so the monster surrounding claws, uh, I think this is the most versatile option if you're going for the hybrid build. Um, the monster surrounding claws, there isn't uh, an actual <laughs> weapon, like a model or a piece for this bits for it. So I'll, I'll show you more in detail how I made mine later. But the um, monster surrounding claws are really nice that uh, they, they get to reroll those wound rolls, which is um, very helpful because being only strength six, um, you won't be wounding things uh, on twos a whole lot. So just having the ability to reroll, especially going against like higher vehicles, uh, it gives a chance for more damage. And especially if you get that six, which makes it AP minus four, um, flat three damage without uh, taking the adaptive physiology. Uh, the reroll um, just gives you a chance to get that six. Again, not something we're relying on, especially with only having four attacks. Uh, it does need the physiology murder size to get the max amount of potential out of it, being that it adds one to the damage and also to the uh, the Tyrant's Strength and the AP too, which is just a little bit more crucial. So um, in my opinion, if you take that and if you can spare the physiology, it's more often than not worth it um, for the Monster Training Claws. Now talking about the Scything Talons, um, in my opinion, they are, they're good, but they're best run in pairs being that you get that extra attack and you get to reroll ones on the hit roll, which is very nice. Um, for the points though, I'd almost prefer personally save the points to get the monster friending claws uh it's, it's tough because again only having that four attacks does really hurt the tyrant in my opinion and that's a huge weakness for this guy as of right now i'm hoping it gets bumped up to five attacks in the next codex big ask for me as a tyrant player um but there is high uh, damage output as well combining with that murder size getting a flat four damage and ap minus four with these things which again if you want to ensure the tyrant's doing damage with those the low number of attacks, it, it is a route to take. But again, I I do find the uh, um, versatile build of having like a melee and a shooting option is best for the tyrant if you can spare the points. So yeah, it, it depends on, on like what you're facing and stuff too. I know this is kind of these very, it's supposed to be a tactic of video saying like this is what to take, but that's that's the thing you gotta you gotta think about what you're playing against and. Uh, how you're going to maximize it so those are the advantages of the talons and, and um the way i see it so maybe keep two sets if you're going to run those one set I, i'd almost just save the points and go with the monster trending claws in my opinion so uh then we're going to talk about the lash whip and bone monsters lash whip or sorry monsters bone swords and then they also the monsters bone sword slash west lash whip option wow <laughs> turn a tongue twister i have those modeled at all um, reason being is that I just, I never see myself in a position that I'm going to use those. If I am going to take a full melee build, I'd prefer to get the extra attack that comes from the Scything Talons and get the extra AP and the ability to reroll the ones. Um, so it's just, yeah, I, I just personally, I don't see a use for them um, when compared to uh, the other melee options. And same with the Lash Whip um, and Monstrous Bone Sword option. I know that it gives the ability for the Tyrant to attack if it dies, the only thing there is just it's very situational and for paying for the points I'd rather take something that's going to help maximize damage versus potentially um, throwing my tyrant at something that is likely going to kill it so that's just uh, I don't know that's just in my opinion there I just I, I don't see a use for that so it's just thinking about how to best spend your points so so now talking about these shooting weapons so obviously you can see I have uh, my twin link devourers modeled here uh, that is, in my opinion, the best option to take for shooting with the Hive Tyrant. Uh, it's great for clearing out hordes. Uh, high volume of shots, one set gives you 12 shots, double sets gives you 24. Um, the only disadvantage, though, is there's no AP. Um, 
like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can combine that with the pathogenic slime stratagem too to make it two damage, which is very nice. Uh, just volume of shots is the big thing here um, with the twin link devourers. Now talking about the death spitters, uh, it's just, in my opinion, this is just a worse version of um, the uh, twin link devourers. It is less shots. Um, it is a higher strength, but still only one damage and it adds AP minus one, but I just, I um, mathematically with the higher volume of shots, they're still going to outshine the, um, the uh, death spitter. So just really hoping next codex, that should be a, maybe a two damage weapon right off the rip. We'll see what happens to it. So very hopeful um, myself in regards to that. So twin link uh, death spitters uh, with slime or maggots. I think that's what the name of it is. Uh, that's an avoid in my opinion. Now talking about the heavy venom cannon, uh, just like I mentioned earlier in the video several times, it's just, it's unreliable. Having the D3 shots hurts. You can take the relic again to um, maximize the shots, but in my opinion, I just, there's other relics that I think are um, a better take. And even still, it is only three shots and each miss really hurts. Um, so it just, it, need, it needs that relic for a consistency but uh, is strong uh, damage output, especially combined with uh, uh, Pathogenic Slime Stratagem. Uh, now the Stranglethorn Cannon, it's same issues as the Heaven Venom Cannon. It's uh, unreliable due to only having the uh, D6 shots. Uh, it's lower damage output when compared to the Heavy Venom Cannon. It does need the Relic and it is very um, situational. It's just, uh, again, if you're using this to hopefully clear out hordes, I know it does have the range over the um, Twin Link Devourers, but just the amount of shots at them, it, it's going to outperform the um, Stranglethorn Cannon in almost all scenarios. So again, just a little bit of uh, inconsistency and unreliability with these two heavier options. There's a way to mitigate that. But on a whole, I think you can best save your points on that. But it depends on, uh, like I said, your meta. I know I've said that uh, so many times, you're probably sick of me hearing that. But I just it's something I really want to hammer home with people that this isn't a be-all, end-all, only way to run the Tyrant. But give you a good um, insight on how to best maximize uh, your own use with the Hive Tyrant. So let's talk adaptive physiologies now. So I'm not gonna go through every single one, but I'm gonna talk about the ones that um, I, are most useful and uh, realistically going to see some advantages um, being used with your Hive Tyrant. So the first one is murder size. Obviously it's going to help boost our melee potential, especially with things like uh, monstrous running claws and also the um, scything talons uh, in case of building a murder tyrant. Uh, so good option there. Uh, personally, that is the best one, I think, uh, when it comes to selecting one for your Hive Tyrant. Uh, the next one is Voracious Appetite, which uh, helps with the, um, the shooting, being that you get the D3 mortals to come through um, if you kill a model from uh, an enemy unit. But again, kind of situational there, so you have to kill a model. So if you're shooting at something with um, um, like just a tank or something, it's really not going to come into play, um, if I'm recalling that correctly. Uh, next is the Accelerated digest Digestion. Uh, it is nice, but um, it's just choosing this over Murder Size, it just makes the Tyrant lack the melee damage um, potential um, that it needs with those sticking four attacks. Um, it, it can help it survive, but again, maybe if your Tyrant's in Leviathan, boom, you're already like, kind of ignoring wounds there. So if you're going for survivability, like that's your goal, Maybe high feet Leviathan is the choice to kind of maximize um, survivability with your tyrant. Now, one other point I want to mention with um, the uh, adaptive physiology is, is: do I need it? Is it needed to make my tyrant run? I know I've mentioned time and time again about having murder size. Um, I've ran my tyrants without it, and it's worked out again, fulfilling that kind of versatile support role. So don't watch this and then think, okay, I need to have a physiology on my tyrant, or else it's not going to be successful. Um, you can run it without it and still be um, have lo loads of success. It obviously is going to make things a little bit harder uh, in terms of like what your expectation is with the Tyrant. But if you have other units that are in uh, much more um, of a demand for a physiology, don't sweat it there. Generally speaking for me, if I can spare the physiology for the Tyrant, they are going to get one and I will certainly spend the CP to give them one. But if you have two other units that are in, demand, mo in more demand for a physiology, by all means, choose them over the Tyrant. It's not the be-all, end-all of needing it to even just perform remotely well. Now let's get into talking about the relics. So uh, I'm gonna go through it again, not every single relic, but more, more over the ones that are kind of applicable to the Tyrant and um, can see some uh, increased value for running the Tyrant with the relics. So the first is the Resonance Barb. I've mentioned this one a couple times earlier in the video. 
uh, if you can, if you don't have anything selected for a relic um, or nothing else that needs um, the ability to improve casting, I really enjoyed putting this one onto the Tyrant as it allows it to really become, like I said, that psychic gunboat, really ensure the smites go off, uh, give it a chance for that super smite, plus also cast three powers so you can make use of all three powers that it has, being it'll have two of uh, the high um, uh, mind discipline and then also the smite power as well, so it's kind of nice. Uh, then talking about the Scythes of Tyrant, that's the Behemoth Relic to make the Murder Tyrant work. I've, I went over essentially what that was before, but it is definitely a great option for the Tyrant. So if you haven't ran the Murder Tyrant, it is a lot of fun to do. I recommend giving it a try. Uh, like I said, when it works, oh man, it's fun. But when he dies, it is sad. Um, the next relic is the um, Venom Thorn Parasite. So this one is the relic that I've mentioned a few times earlier to ensure that... Um, the shooting is more reliable. That gets rid of the randomized uh, D3 and D6 roll for the uh, Venom Cannon and the Strangle Thorn uh, Cannon. So if you are looking to run a uh, heavy shooting platform using either of those weapons, highly recommend uh, using this relic to uh, um, ensure that it's actually going to get the number of shots that you need. The next one, uh, Pathogenesis, I <laughs> hope I said that right. Um, it's used to, the only time I really see it being used is combining it with the Twin Link Devourers, like if you're going full um, Devourer Gunboat Tyrant, uh, being that adding that extra eight inches uh, helps um, take away the one disadvantage with those weapons, being it's only 18 inches. I know that's not a huge distance, um, being if you're getting in range of 18 inches of the enemy on their turn, uh, depending on what it is, they're likely to get close for a decent charge if it's a uh, remotely fast unit. So there's a little bit of risk there that the um, this is, uh, relic helps avoid. Also gets to reroll one uh, hit wound roll, I think it is, which is cool. A single die, I'll take it. Uh, next is the arachnocyte gland. Uh, you need adrenal glands as well for the tyrant to use this relic. I know I haven't really talked about the others yet, but uh, I'll quickly mention adrenal glands, talk to sex, and give my thoughts on those after the relic section. Uh, this is great because it ensures that you can make charges. Again, it depends on the loadout that you're going to run for. Um, if you're taking the murder tyrant, obviously sites of the train are going to take priority there. Uh, one fun thing I did one time is I ran, I built two sort of murder tyrants. Obviously one had sites of the train, the other had something else. It was an absolute blast to use and the arachnocyte helped ensure that one would get its charge off with the other one being slingshot by Swarm Lord. So kind of cool in that regard. Uh, it's not necessary, but if you really just want to ensure that your tyrant's going to make some charges off the rip, um, it's, a, it's a great relic to have. Um, the other one is the Reaper of a, um, the Litterax. It's an alternative loadout um, to the Murder Tyrant, because um, if you don't run Behemoth, you obviously can't take the Slice of Thran Relic. Uh, this is a high risk reward type scenario, being the, if you roll a six, it doubles the damage. So if you combine Toxin Sacks, Murderous Size, and the uh, Swords on the Tyrant, I think you can get uh, a flat 10 damage <laughs> that goes through on a six. So um, really cool, but again, very, very situational and only having those four attacks why four attacks oh um <laughs> just that one of the attack would make such a difference um so it it is very high risk high reward but um it's an alternative if you want to make just a super crazy tyrant that can deal that damage um the other relic that is really decent that i recommend on a tyrant if you can spare it is the chameleon mutation relic from the uh, kraken high fleet which is just minus one for range attacks. So it does help out um, if you're using winged tyrant, hive tyrant launching into the enemy zone and uh, potentially being exposed. So decent one to keep in mind. So now uh, quickly talking about toxin sacs and adrenal glands. Um, really, I only use those, if I can spare the points, I use them. I usually start with adrenal glands because getting that extra uh, movement with advance helps with things like overrun, also ensuring that if, if onslaught goes off, you can get a little bit of extra um, movement potential and soul charge. Toxin sacks, um, if I have five points to spare, I think it is, I'll take those just, they're kind of the gravy, but not necessarily needed, um, being that you gotta roll those sixes. They combine very well with the monster's running claws. But again, I, I personally, I'd say go for the adrenal glands if you're trying to choose between the two. So one other thing I want to talk about as well, I know I didn't mention at the start of the video, was uh, psychic powers. So in terms of psychic powers, what I recommend taking on the Tyrant, I know I've um, talked about this psychic gunboat load um, a couple times with taking the Resonance Barb. Um, the best value I see with the Tyrant is kidding him out with um, more offensive powers, especially if it has wings, being that it's going to be flying forward and um, likely putting out those mortal wounds with smites or um, 
psychic scream so generally for myself that's what i like to get the um tyrant out i'm i'm personally someone who likes taking double catalyst at least uh, two units of catalyst just because if i lose it it is very handy to have another unit that can cast it so for me i often take catalyst and psychic scream for my tyrant and then if i can with the resonance barb um, just to really ensure i get some strong smites or ensure i get all my powers off now we'll go through all of them and i'll um, kind of give some advice on uh, when uh, you'd like to take the power so on a whole dominion i really i just I, I don't see a use for this power a whole lot personally uh, when compared to the other powers for the Tyrant and the kind of role that it is going to play you know, um, within your army. Um, so next up would be the Horror. So the Horror is really good, especially if you're going in um, fast, and, fast and higher with the Tyrant, just flying in and hopefully not dying. Um, so it can kind of give a little bit more protection with the minus one to hit if you don't have anything like chameleic mutation um, and that sort of thing. Plus having the minus one leadership does help a little bit depending on uh, what the tyrant is going to jump in and harass. Um, Paroxysm is really good as well if it's a, some pretty devastating things that could charge the uh, tyrant. helps kind of uh, give a little bit of an insurance policy as well. So a Paroxysm is one that I potentially would take. Um, it's, it's a toss up between Paroxysm and the Horror as a secondary power for me. Um, the next one is Psychic Scream. I almost always take this on the Tyrant. Just like I said, if I can fly forward, this should um, a bunch of mortal wounds on average putting out if, if both powers go off four mortal wounds, which is a really nice at chipping away elite targets or heavy units. Um, so Psychic Scream, in my opinion, is uh, one of the go-tos for the Tyrant. Being that it can move fast, it doesn't need um, visibility as well. So you can kind of position him um, with his big movement to get the, get the job done sort of thing, um, which is uh, quite handy to have. Um, obviously Catalyst, that's um, a, a big one that uh, I really enjoy using myself. Um, like I said, personally, I like doubling up just because when you lose it, it, it does really suck. It is very unfortunate um, when it does happen. Uh, so yeah, just kind of, in my opinion, it's a, it's a handy one to kind of keep um, in the back pocket sort of thing and talking about onslaught as well um onslaught's a decent one to take personally when i run a swarm lord and a tyrant combo i like keeping onslaught on swarm lord being that um, he's going to be back generally the next unit that he's going to sling in could take advantage of uh, the onslaught power so with that combination i would reserve onslaught onto swarm lord however if you're not taking swarm lord and you're looking to get that extra bit of movement um, onslaught can help especially if you're um cracking uh, with the three dice for the advance roll just to kind of get some extra distance uh, to make a charge go off now it is kind of risky again going that rope being that you have to get the power to go off uh, resonance barb does kind of help out in this area a little bit too so just something to think about so uh, my recommendations in the end for psychic powers catalyst psychic scream um, and if you don't want uh, the redundancy having two units of catalyst so you have a swarm lord with it as well or a neural throat or something like that um, take either paroxysm potentially if you know you're going to be up against some heavier melee units or go with the horror so those are some safe bets that you, um, you can take with your tyrants all right everyone so now we're going to take a look at my 2000 point list that i have built it is the competitive list i've been using the most recent report would have been against the imperial guard so you can click up here if you want to go check that out if you haven't seen it amazing game came right down to the wire fantastic i really recommend you watch it a uh, ton of fun so um the list that we have here it's 2000 points i'm not going to go in crazy detail about everything except the hive chart and how it fills its role within this list so this is a battalion of leviathan so the tyrant has wings uh, twin link devour monster friendly claws psychic scream for powers with catalyst then also the adaptive physiology of murderous size swarm a with catalyst and uh onslaught dim karen six zone throats with psychic scream two units of bare bones warriors with double sliding talons 10 termagants a dermic symbiosis barb hero duel and a chronos patrol of a neurothrope with a resonance barb three ripper swarms um five hive guard a lictor and also an exocrine very quickly just want to give a quick shout out to to the patreons on the channel so depending on what tier you choose to support us you actually get to become a model in the army so you will be represented in our battle reports so with our two patreons right now teos and brian uh teos is representing he is the rippers he has chosen them the they might be called lowly but these rippers have gained so many points in many matches so very cool that he has selected them it's going to be awesome 
seeing them in the future battle reports and the barbed hero duel has been chosen by brian so brian the barbed hero duel will be coming uh in many reports to come so really cool feature just to have so quickly uh, a little plug for that so now how does the tyrant fit into this list uh, again i run the tyrant quite often it's a very supportive um, and a harassing unit so the whole idea with this list is obviously the barbed hero duel is the dude that's going to fly in or sorry barbed hero well, potentially. Uh, the Demacaron is going to fly in first in combination with Swarmlord. So depending on the terrain uh, and who I'm facing, the Demacaron lives turn one. He'll be slingshotted with um, the Swarmlord, but the Hive Tyrant kind of flying close by, uh, potentially being used as a um, a secondary unit. Because in some cases, the Demacaron will fall first turn. It's very unfortunate when it happens. I don't like it, but it's a reality. So then having the Hive Tyrant is the backup uh, kind of slingshot unit with the um, Swarmlord is really nice to kind of launch him forward or use him kind of as in late game to kind of hold objectives or like I said, kill off key targets and just smash the mortal wounds out um, with uh, Smite as well as clear off a little bit of chafe with uh, the Twin Leaf Devourer. So that's kind of how he fits into the list. Um, I will say I played a lot of games with this list or um, a slight variation of it. And the one unit between all of it, like everyone thing performs very well and very happy with the list does, but the Hive Tyrant is definitely top three of units that's consistently doing exactly what I want him to do. Uh, and I really enjoy um, that I'm able to get a lot of success with the winged Hive Tyrant, so a ton of fun there. So the next thing we're gonna do is just quickly show you um, um, a sample deployment, then I'm gonna show just kind of a few things about how I'd move the Tyrant and just some thoughts behind why I would move it and what way I know I don't have a, an opponent here. Um, but we're gonna do a little bit of imagination and visualization to give you an idea of how I would play the Hive turn. So we're going to be looking at uh, the, um, I think it's called Hammer and Anvil, or Dawn of War deployment, that's the old name for it, 10 inches up on both sides. Just for simplicity's sake, uh, well, I will take this side. So that's where I'll be deploying, and then um, I'll show you kind of how I'd move the Tyrant around to give you an idea of how to play him. All right, so I've deployed here now. Um, so I have the Warriors on this side. Uh, ready to grab that objective. I'm just going to go from uh, right to left here. Then McCarran ready to spring forward this way. So there is some nice pieces of terrain that it can jump into and hopefully kind of hide itself a little bit. I know it's oh, 18 moons, so it can be shot through these little holes and whatnot. Um, the flying hive tart sitting in the middle here um, between the swarm lords. So the swarm is in position that um, either the demo or the hive tart can get a slingshot depending on what happens to turn one. Barb here duels here to position himself this way or head over that way depending on um, how things shake up with the tyrant and the Demacaron. On this side, I have the zone tropes that kind of come out. The idea there would be send them out this way so they have a couple of um, different fire lanes to choose from in terms of smashing some smites and psychic screams down. Hive guard hitting, hiding behind the obscuring terrain here with the exocrine ready to come around the corner and then he has a fair number of fire lanes um, through the middle. Warriors and termagants ready to zip forward. There's an objective inside here. Um, and then the warriors can go for that objective potentially as well or do scramblers um, as needed. Uh, and then I have the Lictor, obviously, with the um, Termagants in reserve. So that's kind of how, like, I would deploy the uh, Tyrant in, again, in the role I want him to fulfill. Uh, now, I could have put him on this side, but again, I find the redundancy of only having, like, the one Demacaron, having the Tyrant nearby gives a little bit of staying power on this side. Plus, he can also soften up targets, um, uh, uh, like, key targets with smites and everything. So I'm going to grab my measuring tape. So the Hawk Tyrant moves 16 inches. So just to give you an idea of what you could do if, to turn one with him. So if we were to take it out, I know it's kind of rough here. So it's some decent um, area to jump with him. So really like, I know it's kind of open. You could almost slow play him depending again who you're playing against. So let's just say we were playing against my uh, regular Salamander's opponent. There's always lots of aggressors, um, blade guards, predators and dreadnoughts. So uh, depending on what I want to do, I'd almost even use the Demacaron to kind of come up slingshot the Demacaron forward, have the Hive Tyrant fly over kind of behind him and play more of a reserve role that way. So in theory, we're just gonna show you, for example, kind of positioning and what you can do. So with the Demacaron, he would come forward, get slingshot. He's off fighting something here. We're gonna use our imagination a little bit. So he's off there fighting some ideally he kills it, he can leap away. The Hive Tyrant could fly over, over this way. And if he advances if he has to that kind of keeps him back a little bit and again has to make um the enemy come out into the open where my exocrine and barb here duel are going to be sitting with a fire lane right here so i mean something you could do but it's going to open up uh, a lot of damage into um 
this side of the table and being then again with the wings you can position them too so again really key for positioning that way things that are singing right there there is a bit of a fire lane coming here but I obviously I didn't roll the advance roll but you can get him a little bit forward and then if he gets even a little bit ahead right it's going to block out anything in that area again without having to come forward um so if you can like kind of bait things out to move around that way and obviously with Solon Lord we're just he'd be up there would have slingshot him again barb here I'm not going to move the whole thing but because we're talking about the tyrant in spe specifically so that's kind of like some things you can do with him now the other thing to think about let's just say the Dimacaron died first turn unfortunately see you buddy uh, and then the Hive Tyrant was someone that, that could go in. Uh, being where he, he doesn't have 18 wounds, um, like the Dimicaran, and uh, survivability is a little bit lower um, with that in mind. Positioning him, down, depending where things are over here, if he needed to slingshot him in, he'd almost want to do it in such a way that he would move forward. Again, where he moves 16. Uh, I mean, someone like can move a little bit ahead, but anyway. You'd want to launch him almost somewhere where you can get like positioned right here. Use the overrun. And then the idea would be that you want to leap him back here. And if you can, get him set up in such a way that he can get positioned, stay legally on the table, obviously, with the wings, and then get behind some obscuring terrains. Because if the main portion of the army's there, if they pull back to shoot him, well, honestly, that's not a bad thing, being that they're farther away from the key targets that be coming up to the table. So overrun is key in keeping that in mind. Or if you can, get him here. Then, again, potentially depending on the advance rate you can get, you can even slingshot him back closer into your own terrain. Or if there's something a little bit forward, again, if they have first turn, kill it, zip, right back inside. So that's the big thing. When you think about overrun, especially with a, a flying high turn, you need to think about, okay, where am I going to put this guy? I don't want him to come out, kill whatever he's going to kill, hopefully, and then just be a sitting duck in the open. So overrun is a stratagem that goes hand in hand, especially with... Uh, well, the Dimicaran and the Flying High Turn, because keeping that guy alive to the late game uh, is crucial, because usually later in the game, um, most ideally most of the hard targets have been killed, and he's great for mopping up, clearing off uh, final objectives, and just again, with his speed, he can jump around um, where is needed, so very crucial in that regard, so. Hope that gave a little insight on just uh, how you can play the Wing Hive Tyrant, and again, how it fits in with the list, and how you can use it in your own matches to find lots of success with this guy. All right, so now we're going to talk about modeling to end the video. So this is a very important part um, when modeling your Hive Tyrant, being that there's so many different weapon options and so many different options that don't actually come in the kit. Um, so we'll take a look at the three Hive Tyrants that I built, and we'll kind of talk about the posing and the weapon options I went with this. So this is the default look that um, the Hive Tyrant uh, has out of the box. Uh, not a lot of alterations done with this guy. Uh, I just really like the pose. This is the very first one I built. Now the unique thing here is you'll see that my Twin Link Devourers, um, I custom built these using um, a uh, monstrous Death Spitter, and then I cut off the end of it, then simply just use a um, Devourer end from the uh, Termagant camp, I think it was, or Warrior. I mean, you, uh, you, you've got, if you have Tyranids, you've got to have some Devourers lying around. So I stuck one on there, then I took another Devourer. I'll do my best here to give you a good look at it. Uh, snipped off the end here, I like the back end of it, snipped off the hoses, and there's like little spikes that come on the death spitter portion here. So if you snip them off, they line up almost perfectly. So then I put that um, other devourer on the bottom. So that represents uh, one, sorry, in this case with the wings, that would be a twin leap devourer, two of them, and then this would be the other set to do 12 shots, 12 shots. Um, that's kind of the way I did it there. And then on my current effects, it's like I built them. Uh, I have I did the same idea as this, except for I didn't put the bottom piece on, so just picture that right there. Oops. Put the extra part on them. So that's how I built the Devourers. Uh, that's, like I said, the classic pose there. Uh, looking at this guy here, the only major difference uh, with him is that I didn't use the, um, call it the flyrant tail, I used the walking high turn tail. I'm just gonna move him so the focus will be better. Um, with this guy, and then I magnetized him. So magnetizing, um, you're gonna see right up here, there'll be a little thing pop up. You can click that and watch my video that I did on how to magnetize Tyranid Monsters. I'll cover it all in detail, but just showing you very quickly, if you grab the weapon that you want, you can drill out the end of the weapon, put the magnet in there, and on Tyrant, you just drill out right inside, have the magnet there, and then boom. 
Got yourself a magnetized tyrant. Now you might be saying, okay, what if I don't want to permanently glue the wings on? That's where this guy comes into play. So with my third tyrant, I knew, okay, there might be the odd time I want to run a walking tyrant, so I don't want to put the wings on. And I also just like the look of a uh, walking hive tyrant as well. Move that one over, have a look at this guy. So we'll I'm gonna pull the weapons off him here, and then I'll, I'll show you a closer look at those monstrous running claws. I'm gonna do my best here being that I'm holding the camera. I didn't really need to get a tripod, I had one, but it broke. Kids. So we'll grab the set of wings. I'll show you what I did. This requires a, a bit more um, modeling work, uh, a little bit of pinning here. So, uh, if you just magnetize the wings, they are a little bit too heavy and they're gonna just fall off. So you need to do um, some pinning. So looking at the wings, all I did was glue the magnet onto um, like the uh, arm socket piece. So it's the same idea as with the weapons that you saw. And then what I did is just behind the um, magnet, I drilled the hole in and put this little pin. I mean, you can use any size, like a paper clip would work. I just happen to have these uh, little thicker pins there. I don't know the exact sizing. I really don't know where I got them from. It was only about like, it only goes into about there. It's not long, just enough to keep, stabilize the wing. Then on the tyrant, drilled a hole uh, right in behind where the, the magnet was there. That's where that pin can slot in. It does require a little bit of um, work lining everything up, um, as you'll see in a moment. You can mess up, and I'll, I'll show you why. So then, I'll show you how I messed up. So again, I'm gonna try and do this there. So there you go, just line the pin up, magnet. It is nice and sturdy, not gonna come off. Pops right out. Now let's take a look at this side. So as I mentioned, you can mess up. I did mess up. Uh, I drilled the hole in um, too low of a spot so the pin and the magnet wouldn't line up so I had to drill the hole a little bit bigger so the pin could bend down a little bit and then line up in the arm socket area. So what I did is I simply just, he got hit by a plasma pistol. <laughs> I know you might not want to do that but hey, it, it fit the theme of my ultramarines fighting my uh, Tyranids, I mean that guy in that base, poor thing. Um, so yeah, then I turned, it, I turned it into a wound. Then the nice thing as well is where I messed up on the um, the drilling as well. This arm, this arm, I did this side first, if you can tell. I really messed up. I drilled out too much of the hole, so I made I made it look like it like battle damage. I'll show you what it looks like when you put it on. So if you do mess up though, there, I'll just give you an idea. You can always fix it, cover it up a little bit. So this side fits on, still nice and sturdy. So you can even see this side's a little bit looser, like it doesn't uh, stay on as well. It stays perfectly fine like it's not going anywhere but just to give you a little confidence that if you do slip up a little bit it's not going to ruin the model and then simply put it I know it's going to be hard to pick up here oh no there we go so it looks like he got blast there's like some bone or whatever showing there so kind of cool adds a bit of character to the model as well um so now uh before I show you the monster training claws one other thing I wanted to just show um again where I'm trying to <laughs> do this with one hand and holding the camera So, uh, I mentioned earlier when talking about the wings that they do want to take up a weapon slot. Uh, one thing you can do to uh, work against this, if you need to be extremely what you see is what you get. Um, if I'm doing the uh, hybrid build, I take a monster trending claw, for example, or a side of town, whatever it is, then this represents, again, a set of twin link devourers. So you can have two hits, so that's the whole shots. You can simply just clip one on. monster friend claw and that since there's no there's no official way to do it just again make sure you get what you see is what you get that's one way to do it alternatively i've often considered these as monster friendly claws they fit the card there is no official model for it and then talking about that i'll give you a look at my monster friendly claw and how i built it so I, it's not the prettiest thing i whipped it together just to be ready for a tournament but it does the job and honestly i'm pretty happy with it so what i did is i took a warrior monsters or not monster's claw but a warrior rending claw from one of the older kits it's like the larger one then i took um i took uh the hand of a scything talon snipped off the scything talon so i'll show you it's an actual one here so i snipped it off as you can see like right there that gave me the, the front part like the kind of the forearm area 
snipped off the warrior um, monster friendly claw right at the arm, like right where the kind of sinews or whatever meet in there. Then just glued it on, filed it down so it lined up kind of well. I know it's, they're both from different eras of painting, so that's why I think they won't match exactly. But it, like I said, it, it does the trick um, tremendously. Um, this one here I found lined up a little bit better. I know you could probably like green stuff or something make it a little bit smoother, but honestly, I wasn't overly worried about it. Like um, once it gets on the model, it looks great. <laughs> there you go, monster training claw. So that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this Tierna Tactica video. I apologize for being so late. I know I've been promising this for quite some time, but um, finally had the chance to sit down get all everything written out and then film it and I hope it did the um, high tyrant justice and I hope it gave some insights on how to run the high turn in your own list plus helped with modeling it and took a little bit of the intimidation factor away for you so please let me know in the comments below what you thought of the video what you want to see next for Tierna Tactica I promise I won't take three months to make it this time <laughs> um, we'll see you in the next video and thank you so much for your support be sure to um, drop a little thumbs up for us too it means hold the world and if you could, if you would like to support us even further, we do have our Patreon page. So you can find that in the link down below. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day.